Today I'm going to upgrade my 48 volt e-bike battery to 60 volt by using a very simple method. I'm going to use the same battery pack I have here. I'm just going to add in this Tesla Model 3 2170 battery and I'm going to put this in series with these to make it to 60 volts. So the new battery pack is going to have higher voltage and also higher capacity. That means I can go both faster and farther on my bike. Usually upgrading an e-bike battery pack means that you have to get rid of your old battery and put in a new battery entirely different than the old one. But with this upgrade, I'm still able to use my old battery pack. So how is it done and what are the end results? That's what we're going to find out in this video. Before I start the video, I got to say do this at your own risk if you choose to do it upgrading to a higher voltage battery can destroy your controller and or your motor and with a higher voltage input your motor will spin faster and therefore you can go even faster and that's a lot more dangerous now that's out of the way let's get started this battery i made back in 2017 and that was six years ago and back then there was no 10 amp hour. The highest capacity was this one, which is 4 amp hour. So I just stack 5 2 amp hour batteries together in parallel to make this giant 10 amp hour that I use to lift weight. And when I was not lifting weight with these, I used them to ride around with my e-bike like a madman. Back then when they were new, I got about 15 miles of range on full throttle. Now after 6 years and 1500 miles, I got about 11 miles of range. So I've lost about 30% capacity already, so that's why it's time for an upgrade. The first question is, what is the maximum voltage my controller can take? I cannot just blindly put another battery in series and raise the voltage up to say 100 volts and hope that it will work. So I open up the controller and pick inside the main board. The capacitor inside says 63 volts and that's the maximum voltage it can take before it would blow up. There's a lot of 48 volt controllers that have capacitor rating up to 63 volts. Not all of them are like that though, but I have opened up both brushed and brushless controllers and most of them have 63 volt ratings on the capacitors. So is 63 volt a magic number? Why do a lot of them have 63 volt limit? Well, it turns out at least that's what I think. If you take 63 volts and you divide it by 4.2 volts, you get exactly 15. Each lithium ion NMC battery has a 4.2 volt maximum charging voltage limit. That means if you connect 15 cells in series, you get 4.2 volts times 15, and that's exactly 63 volts. So based on this information, my new battery pack is going to be 15S. My 2 cobalt battery, 48 volt, which is already 12S. So I need another 3S battery pack to connect in series with my 2 cobalt battery. And that will make the whole thing a 15S battery pack. The second question is, what kind of battery do I need to connect in series with my existing 48 volt battery? Well, my 48 volt battery has a capacity of 10 amp hour. That means my new pack also has to be 10 amp hour. And I need to raise the voltage to 60 volts. So from 48 volt, I will need another pack of 12 volts to raise it to 60 volts. So my new pack will have to be 12 volts and 10 amp hour. The third and probably the most important question is what is the discharge rate of the new battery pack? Discharge rate refers to how many amps a battery can put out continuously without heating too much and explode. I've done a test before with my e-bike using this 60 volt power tool battery and during the test the bike pulls maximum 26 amps during the acceleration and it only lasts for a few seconds and then it pulls about 18 amps continuous. That means my new battery has to be able to run at 26 amp on burst mode and 18 amp continuous. 
for that reason I'm using the Tesla Model 3 2170 sales I have tested them before in, my, in one of my video and I'll put the link in the description each of these Tesla sales can run comfortably at 10 amps continuous so I can put two of them in parallel and they can handle up to 20 amps continuous surely they can do up to 26 amps in burst mode just for a few seconds so here's a new pack it's composed of six Tesla Model 3 270 cells connected in 3S and 2P configuration which is three in series and then two in parallel each cell is rated at 5 amp hour capacity so this pack is 12 volt 10 amp hour capacity which is capable of running at 20 amps continuous discharge let me show you how we connect this to the bike I've got two adapters here and each one will go to my battery for a total of 48 volt because these two are connected in series and then I have another series connection which I connect one end to this 48 volt pack and then the other end to this 12 volt pack this goes in here like that and now we have all three small packs connected in series and the main terminal here that comes out is 60 volts time for test drive battery is plugged in ready to go and fully charged 61 volts here we go Twenty two, twenty five, twenty seven, thirty, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four. Almost 35. Let's talk about range and speed. So with the old 48 volt battery, I get about 11 miles of range and 30 miles per hour maximum speed. With the 60 volt battery, I get about 14 miles of range on full throttle and about 35 mile per hour maximum speed so with the new battery I got the best of both worlds faster speed and longer range however by using a battery just up to the limit of my controller and my motor I run the risk of damaging and reducing their lifespan but that's the chance I'm willing to take I want to upgrade my 48 volt controller to a 72 volt controller anyway so I can't wait for this 48 volt controller to die I'm gonna come back and update with you after a couple of weeks to let you know how this works out but that's all for now thanks for watching see you next time